Thank you for tuning into the 5 o'clock news. I'm Keith Cardona with Around the Horn, Cold War. And I'm Ralph Katorski. Tonight, we will have a number of interesting stories, such as the election of 1952, the Korean War, an interview with Senator McCarthy, and plenty more. First, our reporter, Alec Anelian, will be interviewing Senator McCarthy. Now to you, Alec. Thank you, Keith. And thank you, Senator, for giving us this interview. It's my pleasure. So, Senator, can you tell me a little why the House on American Activities Committee, or HUAC, was created and what was the purpose of it? HUAC was created because the U.S. government was suspicious of being of communist parties. It, it was established in 1938 and was to question political ties of members of peace organizations. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Well, now can you tell me a little bit about the Algar Hiss trial? Sure. HUAC was investigating individuals who were being accused of communism. Well, how exactly was Algar Hiss involved? Mr. Whitaker Chambers accused Algar Hiss of being a communist spy. Well, for those, uh, for those at home who don't know who Mr. Chambers is and how he's a valid source, can you please tell them? Mr. Chambers is a former member of the Communist Party. Yes, and Hiss has also been giving Chambers secrets to pass out to the Soviets, right? That is correct, sir. So, how do you know he's guilty? Chambers produced microfilm copies of documents that he hid in a pumpkin. Thank you. Lastly, Senator, what are your opinions on McCarthyism, meaning that you have a biased opinion and accuse anybody and everybody of communism without any strong, hard evidence? Would you say that's true? No comment. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for your time. Now back to you, Keith and Ralph. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but stay tuned because we got plenty more in store. This commercial break is sponsored by Bomb Shelter Incorporated. <laughs> During the Cold War, many Americans feared an attack. To prevent one of these possible attacks, bomb shelters were built all over the country. And you can have your own bomb shelter for only $149, but because an attack wasn't likely, we used ours for something else. If you want a bomb body, come work out in our bomb shelter. Bomb shelter workouts! Only results you'll ever gonna get during the Cold War. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Around the Horn in the Cold War. So, we've actually got some very, very bad news about our other news anchor, Keith. He was actually out on a cigarette break recently, and he got hit by an 18-wheeler, and paramedics are telling us that he's in critical condition. So, lucky for us, we had a backup newscaster, and uh, his name is Ricky Bobby. Thank Come you, Ralph. Ricky Bobby. Now we're going to report to our Korean correspondent, Jun Ki Bae, and he's going to report to us on the Korean War. Thanks, guys. And now for the Korean War. Recently in the Korean War, the UN and South Korean forces were forced almost completely out of Korea by the Soviet forces. Now, for those of you that don't understand why the United States, along with the UN, is involved in this war, it's because the Republic of Korea, also known as South Korea, is threatened by the communist <laughs> North Korea, also known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. <laughs> so the United States intervened because they were afraid communism was going to spread into South Korea and destroy the South Korean democratic government. The UN approved and sent troops into South Korea. Unprepared, the UN and South Korean forces were forced to retreat due to the heavily armed and prepared Soviet and North Korean forces. General Douglas MacArthur devised a plan to counterattack the Soviet forces. The UN forces took over code names red, green, and blue beaches off the coast of Incheon. As you can see, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is Incheon, I believe. And, and that right there is where the codenames red, blue, and green island should be. Now, as you can see, Seoul is right around. Oh, shit. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Seoul. Seoul is right around Incheon, which is a very good strategic move by General MacArthur. Now on September 15th, the forces landed on Incheon, took over and forced the Soviet and North Korean forces to retreat. Just recently on September 25th, the UN forces took over the capital of South Korea, which is Seoul. Realizing that the North Korean forces were weak, the UN forces forced the enemies past the 38th parallel. Right along there. And, and almost into China, which is right around here, as you can see. Um, and I just got big news. And it seems like China has now threatened to attack the UN forces if they come closer to their borders. Tune in tomorrow to find out if the UN and China's decision. Thank you, June, for that very insightful report about the information of Korea. Now we'll be turning to Michael Mount reporting on the election. Thanks, Ricky. Eisenhower has been campaigning on three major ideas. The Korean War, corruption, and a balanced budget. Eisenhower said that he would get the U.S. out of Korea. He also w wants to clean up the government regarding the bribery charges by, Truman appoint by Truman's appointees that were un uncovered. He feels that if the women could balance the family budget, then the government could too. The, re the Republicans promoted the fa American family to appeal to women voters. Eisenhower's campaign is about traditional ideas, home, and family. The Republicans also sent out their hatchet men, McCarthy, Nixon, and Dewey, to campaign against the Democrats in the anti-war, anti-bribery, and anti-communist message. Stevenson has not attacked Eisenhower directly in his campaign because Eisenhower is considered a hero. Stevenson also could not be blamed for what had taken place in the past because he was not a part of the Truman administration. The Democrats have been having problems getting support from women because the women did not think the Democrats would help them financially. The Democrats could not promote the strong family image because their candidate was undiscovered. Thank you very much, Michael Mount, for the insightful information. Word has come in that Eisenhower has won the election. Now we will go to Corresponder Ralph Katorski for information on entertainment. Thank you, Ricky. And I am Ralph Katorski. I will be discussing entertainment during this wonderful time period known as the 1950s. First, the creation of the amazing Superman on television. He is said to be faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, and able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The new television series stars George Reeves and the voice as the voice of Clark Kent and Bill Kennedy as the announcer. It is a huge hit and many many Americans have been drawn to the show. But the most popular show is called I Love Lucy. It is about a woman and her family and their life in the 1950s. A recent census has been taken that shows that on January 19, 1953, 65% of Americans viewed the show when Lucy gave birth. The first time the show aired was on October in 1951 in Desulu Studios, and it has been a hit ever since. Tune in to watch I Love Lucy on the CBS Network. Thank you very much for your time. Now back to you, anchors. Thank you very much for the insightful information, Ralph. And now we will go to correspondent Michael Dwyer, who will talk about the topic of the FCDA pertaining to duck and cover. Thanks, guys. I come to you with breaking news. The Federal Civil Defense Administration has just passed out millions of pamphlets labeled duck and cover. With the nuclear era in its boom, we cannot be too careful. I repeat, we cannot be too careful. The point of duck and cover is to educate the people, especially the youth, on how to protect themselves in case of a nuclear attack. In, in 1949, the Soviet Union successfully detonated a nuclear weapon. Parents out there, I cannot stress enough, make sure you inform your children. They need to be aware of the precautions taken in case of an emergency. Wait, this just in, 
Duck and Cover, will officially be released as a film in 1952. Archer Productions Incorporated, a New York advertising firm, has been contact, contracted to produce it for the FCDA. The film's first public viewing will be in January. So get your tickets. They're going to go out. They're going to sell out quick. It will be showed as part of an F- FCDA sponsored traveling show called Alert America, which will tour the country for nine months in 1952. Critics rate this film five stars, saying it's informative and interesting. A must see. The film is set to be. Sh- shown in schools across the United States. The main character is Bert the Turtle. It provides students with a cheery instructor to guide them in the most up-to-date survival strategy in case of a nuclear attack. The plan is simple and straightforward. At the first warning of attack, like Bert, you duck to avoid the, the things flying through the air and cover to keep from getting cut or even badly burned. Thus, Duck and Cover was born. This is great, and I highly me- recommend seeing this. And I will repeat this once more. Please be careful and remember, duck and cover. Thank, thank you, and back now back to you guys. Okay. Thank you, Mike, for that awesome segment. <coughs> Next, we have Asian reporter Ling Ling Takanawa for his segment on China's fall to communism. Thanks, guys. The Qing Dynasty was recently overthrown in 1911. A revolution started to break out after the fall of the dynasty. A civil war is starting to erupt between the Nationalist Force and the Communist Force. The National Party is led by Chiang Kai-shek. The Communist Party is led by Mao Zedong. Right now, the Communist Party is giving out land to the pe- peasants due to the victory over Japan. This and its fight against the Japanese forces, many people are starting to support the Communist Force because of its devotion to the nation. This also is going to lead to the increase in army recruits for the Communist Party. The Communists is gaining even more supporters among the Chinese people after the Allied victory over Japan. Also, the lower class people want communism in China because they want equality for everyone in the nation. They do not want to be considered a lower class peasant anymore. They are wishing for equal status with everyone in China. Oh my god, I just received news that the Communist Party and the National Party are engaging in a battle. The National Party is being supported by the United States because the United States does not believe in communism. However, the Communist Party is is pushing the National Party back towards a small island called Taiwan. I just received news that U.S. just sent General Marshall to arrange a truce. But a truce cannot be is not being met between the two forces. Unfortunately, the communist force just defeated the nationalist fo- the national fo- the nationalist force. China will now be called People's Republic of China. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. Oh no. My two-headed lacrosse stick broke. What am I going to do? It's okay, baby Mikey. The glue fairy is here. Yay! You can fix it with this new crazy glue. It's made in 1951 and can fix almost anything. It's as good as new! Crazy glue! I love crazy glue! Good news, peeps. Keith Cardona has made a miraculous recovery. And we'll be here just in time for the last segment of the day. Now to you, Keith. The Cold War edition. Tune in next time. Die Saison ist alle 